To say Insomniac never sleep is a running gag now, but the truth is they really have delivered on two amazing things. They push technology with focus and at a pace others struggle to compete with. I cannot think of another single studio that has delivered not only the quality but quantity of games they have since the amazing 2018 PS4 Spider-Man. But here we are again on the fifth release of six years across two generations and that does not include three PC releases they help support. Now, as many know, I love and always have loved technology and hard work, and Insomniac have embodied that for many a year. Now, this is not a competition with other studios, merely recognition for what they have done and more so the intelligent use of it within their engine to empower and enable teams to deliver at this pace and level. Spider-Man 2 has raised that level once more, and I have a bigger, deeper dive coming next week that will be more for those that have played it or do not mind a few minor spoilers. But today, I wanted to focus on a spoiler-free subject that seemed to confuse some on the internet since my IGN review and confuse themselves. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. And is an area that Insomniac have always been a pioneer on. Performance. Now one reason I do these split videos is the resolution and performance aspects of a game are largely the least interesting. Not to say that either are meaningless on the contrary, just that beyond a level they are not that important over so many more aspects that are and can become an obsession for some. So, the numbers and modes first. Like prior games, Spider-Man 2 comes with two modes. Ray Tracing Redacted Performance Mode isn't here as it's a PS5 exclusive. So you get Fidelity Mode that turns on all the bells and whistles with Ray Tracing 4K resolutions, which can scale to a counted low of 1800p in that fixed 30fps mode. Partnering this is the performance mode, which includes the same ray traced effects, just cut back on the range of objects reflected and amount, along with a few less surfaces that fall back to cube maps. Both use it on water bodies and interior scenes now. In addition, they also reduce the hair spline effects with reduced splines and resolution, along with shadow cascade and resolution and ambient occlusion, which remains screen spaced in both modes. The biggest cut is resolution though. I'm so getting fired. This now tops out at 1440p in the performance mode and can scale down to 1080p in its base 60fps mode at least. The game uses Insomniac's own Temporal Injection AA to reconstruct that back to 1440p or 4K targets as and when needed. And due to this and the incredible but comic book art style the image quality is superb in both modes but performance certainly has more instability and shimmer. But Fidelity has the superior resolve overall on the exquisite materials, textures and assets in the game and those RT reflections are of a higher resolution using a reconstructed 1080p base whereas in performance mode there are 720p base reconstructed back to 1440p. All in, these are the best ray trace effects and reflections in any console game and they also have one of the largest impacts on the visual quality as you can see so much life in them which adds a great deal to the big Apple's impact with even more of it for Peter and Miles to explore now they are a twosome. Like prior games though, starting with Rift Apart, Insomniac have made the best use of a 120Hz screen and VRR screens. These two functions are separate to the modes just explained and can be enabled on each or disabled. However, without a 120Hz screen, only the performance 60fps mode will benefit from VRR, as the base 30fps cap in Fidelity is below the use case of VRR and performance here is already rock solid. It says 30 and you get it. As I've completed the game, even in the heaviest sections, it maintains that 99% of the time, and any dips are cutscenes, shot swaps, small loading stutters, or maybe one alpha effect too many in your face. It is almost a perfect mode with the brilliant and improved per pixel motion blur, and without it, the game does feel and look less smooth, certainly on fixed panel displays such as an OLED or LED. It also adds to the CGI look that Insomniac games have with such high quality assets, lighting, and models, and is my default mode almost with one caveat. 
The performance mode is also a largely locked affair. Some small dips into the mid-50s at worst from some streaming sections within gameplay and a couple in the more venomous sections, but by and large, it runs perfectly on a flat 60Hz screen. But with VRR enabled, those minor dips are well within that 48fps lower bound, and this is not really where VRR is needed. Where it is, is when you enable that 120Hz mode, which now, with VRR disabled, the fidelity mode now targets a 40fps readout, the mid-ground between 30 and 60. Basically, 25 milliseconds is slap bang in the middle of 16 and 33. And this is my default mode, as you get all of the 30fps quality, a slightly lower DRS base now of approximately 1440p levels, but the performance is significantly smoother, and although not just like 60fps, it does run and play much smoother than 30fps and the minor dips in resolution are pretty much invisible. We gotta help him before he hurts someone or himself. Open wide! You can't really appreciate the smoothness it offers here as it really is only available on a 120Hz screen and this is a 60Hz container on YouTube. The boost this adds to the motion and input is welcome though, and as I said with Rift Apart, Horizon Forbidden West, and others such as Requiem, this is the perfect compromise for games that cannot hit the required 16 millisecond frame time at the level the developers envisioned, but can hit 25 milliseconds with minor nips and tucks. In this mode, the PlayStation 5 is largely, if not fully, GPU and or memory bound, and yet at a flat 40 FPS, it is as rock solid as the 30 FPS mode, just faster, smoother and better for it. If you have a 120Hz screen, then just enable this from the off, turn on fidelity, and then never look back. Can't lose Connors. One more variable does crop up though, and that's with VRR enabled. As here, we can see the limit of the PS5 with a potential 60 FPS target now in specific light workloads. The main readout here though is the mid ground of 40 and 50 FPS. The DRS may also be slightly wider here, but I still only counted 1440p as a base, a minor blemish, but the results are more a curio than a significant increase to the excellent 40 FPS mode. It is another great choice for benchmarking against PC, as I used in my PC test with Remastered and Rift Apart, and I'm really glad the choice is here for you to make. And if any pro console does land, then this mode could become the new go-to mode and continue as a benchmarking option. Finally, I wanted to spend a minute or two explaining how all of this works, as some static cropped up online this week, and I saw much confusion and consternation online from some. Now the game menu is merely presenting you, the player, a UI into the engine config, but currently at least, it is a one-way setting in that the game engine needs to make an operating system call to your PlayStation 5 to check if A, you actually have a 120Hz screen connected, or an Elgato HD60X capture card in my case, or B, if you have a VRR capable screen or capture card, again as per my Elgato HD60X. If both of these are true, then the setting will be active in the game. But this is not updated from that operating system layer call. It just reflects what you chose. If both of these checks are false in the operating system, then the, it will be window dressing into the menu you're looking at. And let's say, for example, if somebody thought that they could capture a 120Hz capture off screen or through a card, but the card itself doesn't support VRR, then it doesn't matter what you've got enabled in the menu, you'll be sadly mistaken with the results because you'll just get a 60 FPS output. No point counting the frames there. It is on you to know what setup you have and then have it enabled correctly in the operating system menu. If, for example, a 120Hz screen and a VRR screen or capture card are connected, then you have everything set to choose between fidelity and performance with a cap of 40 or 60 respectively unlocked to 60 or 120 FPS, again respectively. If not, then you will be left thinking you have better performance than you actually do. Now the VRR option has two modes, smooth just maintains that target for 60 or 40 better and maintains a smaller DRS window and the unlocked option extends that DRS window to the full 1440p or lower in that performance mode to get the best performance. The last thing to discuss is you can see here me capturing it at 60 FPS. 
but this is a 120 hertz output from the PlayStation 5. You have to be set at this level. Even though my card supports VRR pass through, it can't capture at a VRR rate, i.e. it can't keep fluctuating its frame rate within the video file. So I capture at eight milliseconds, 120 FPS, to show the closest match to what you get on screen. As you see here, capturing at 60 FPS, so long as it falls close to that 16 millisecond window, you get a closer balance to what it runs like on a 120 hertz screen. But here, where it's dipping more into that 25 millisecond range, it actually shows an incorrect value of somewhere in the 30s. When you capture correctly at 120 FPS, you can see I'm gaining somewhere between 10 and 11 FPS, and that's closer, not 100%, but almost 99% accurate to what you will get on a VR. Are 120 hertz capable screen again just adding this for clarity because people seem to confuse and conflate what 120 hertz is what 60 fps is what 120 fps is and all those kind of caveats i'm not going to go in depth here but hopefully this video and explanation has helped those that got confused and maybe those that don't know how to turn this on in their menu just be sure that your operating system reflects your screen of choice <laughs> It's not the scary lizard dude. And we can see that 40 to 50 FPS is the average readout in that fidelity mode. But we have one final mode, which is that VRR unlocked 120 hertz performance mode. Again, we can see it hit 100 FPS. But again, it's in those same isolated areas as the fidelity mode hits 60. The main bulk of play, though, is somewhere between 60 and 70 FPS, with some sections, specifically real-time cutscenes, hitting around 70 to 85. A nice and welcome boost yet again, and could be the rush to a high frame rate mode if a PlayStation 5 Pro were to swing in next year. Forward compatibility at its finest, without a line of code or binary file compiled. The main thing to reflect here is Insomniac have gone over and above many other teams, and they deserve the praise for that. If we take some examples over the past year or so, third party in Jedi Survivor and its performance mode, which was wholly inadequate at launch and then had an updated version recently that was needed, but that came months after the game shipped. And even first party titles in Redfall, which has only just this week shipped with a 60 FPS mode on the Series X and S, something that should have been present from day one for an online shooter, as it really is required. The team here have already delivered both ends with a sharp 4K locked 30fps fidelity mode and an equally locked 60fps performance mode with intelligent nips and tucks. The 40 and 60 plus VRR modes are all icing on that cake and show, along with increases in engine work, visual quality, wall density, fast travel, that the biggest competition they have is themselves. And that's a great place to be. <laughs> On a pure game and tech perspective though, Spider-Man 2 is an excellent sequel with a great and compelling story and certainly gameplay moments that you will remember. The biggest takeaway is it improves on the first game and expands in many areas but is not a night and day difference. Cover more in my next video. If you liked the first two, then you will love this newer, darker, Raimi inspired tome and in the end, it will make you feel like Spider-Man or maybe Venom. Anyway, I'm out, and this is a short but fast, hopefully, deep dive into Spider-Man. Much more to come. And remember, I am self-funded and independent, so if you can help, please like, comment, share down below. Please subscribe to help get my numbers up, and look over on my Patreon for more exclusive content or early access. I'm out, but I'll be swinging back very soon with far more content on the channel and elsewhere. Until then, I'll catch you on the web. You can't beat dad jokes, can you? Yeah! Your prey just ate three tons of dead fish! <coughs> what Wait, is this stuff? And he wants to change the menu! <coughs> so if anyone's prey, it's not the scary lizard dude! <coughs>